The year is 1945. Humanity is reeling from the horrors of World War II. But amid the ruin, a hero arises. A very round and soft hero. Moomintroll. This gentle hippopotamus goes on cute adventures with his friends and family, pausing now and then to swoon over his girlfriend and boyfriend. You heard that right, a bisexual, polyamorous 1940s hippopotamus. The cozy, magical world of Moomin Valley was, and continues to be, popular with children the world over. In the process, it introduced the idea that it's natural to like boys and girls, even at the same time. I am your host, RK, and an anti-fascist marshmallow hippo, teaching kids about queerness is culturally effed. Moomin Valley, the TV series, came out in 2019, the latest in a long line of Moomin media. They star Moomin Troll, a troll who looks like he's made of mochi and has a personality to match. The original books and comics have inspired TV shows, movies, and a mountain of toys, and two theme parks, one in Finland and one in Japan. The character who would become Moomin Troll first appeared in the anti-fascist magazine Garm, named for the giant hound of Norse myth. Tove Janssen began working for the publication when she was just 15. The Moomin Valley setting became a lifelong and autobiographical project. For those unfamiliar with the franchise, Moomin Valley is a remote and idyllic land. The recent term cottagecore fits the setting really well. It's inhabited by Moomins and other adorable trolls. Troll in the Nordic sense includes a wide range of mythical creatures, ranging from sinister to mischievous to helpful. Often they are identified by their donkey-like tails. Witches, flying machines, sea monsters, time travel, ghosts, and aliens also show up regularly. Money and careers are seen as troublesome things to be avoided. Everyone lives comfortable lives connected with their communities. All told, it's a reassuring, safe, nurturing place to visit. Ideal escapism for a poor, weary world. Even when a comet, flood, or volcano threatens the Moomins' very existence, the audience knows they are in safe pause. These kooky and colorful creatures aren't perfect. They squabble and fib, get moody and jealous, and sometimes fall prey to their own fears and anxieties. But ultimately, Moomin House is a warm and welcoming place to all sorts, so long as they respect each other. Tove Janssen was also very much a furry. She regularly described Moomin Troll as based on herself, though she had various other OCs. So, how do we know that Moomin Troll is intended to be bisexual? His relationships are based on Janssen's own, with both men and women. The sensitive yet adventurous Moomin Troll is, of course, her fursona. The wise vagabond Snufkin is based on socialist politician Atos Wartenin, I will botch these names, whom Janssen was engaged to. The vivacious, assertive Snork Maiden is based on theater director and ergonomist Vivisa Bandler, with whom she openly had a relationship at the same time, in spite of homosexuality being illegal. That's right, not only were furries anti-fascist before it was cool, but they were openly queer at a time when it was dangerous to be so. This wasn't even an isolated incident of characters being stand-ins for people in her life. Thingami and Bob are explicitly a lesbian couple in the Swedish version, even if the English translation shies away from this. They speak the same secret language that Tove and Vivisa exchanged in love letters, in which also contain cutesy talk and roleplay elements, to Ugly... oh god, these names... Tuliki Pientelei, 
Jensen's longtime partner, is likewise transposed into the practical and wise Two Tiki. What of the proposed Snork Maiden Movement Troll Snufkin Polycule? Are we over sexualizing these cinnamon rolls? Unlikely. Jansen had a pretty liberated attitude towards sex, having produced an erotic Moomin stage play titled Crash in 1963. What's more, the character Mimble is a poster creature for free love, having dozens of kids with various partners. Her name comes from a Swedish slang word for making love. So Mimble means one who loves or horny. By contrast, it's pretty tame to say she wrote Moomin Troll as being in love with both Snork Maiden and Snufkin. We even get the occasional cute moment between the lovers, such as when Snork Maiden flirts with and flusters the usually unflappable Snufkin. Snork Maiden and Snufkin, far from being rivals in a love triangle, are playful and friendly toward each other. In various versions of the canon, the normally stoic Snufkin talks at length about Snork Maiden's beauty, with her returning the favor. As one might expect, this trio inspires a great deal of warm and fuzzy fan art. But it also gives kids positive role models in their own lives. Money doesn't determine your worth, gender roles don't determine your part on the stage. You can date nobody, somebody, or several somebodies at a time, no matter the era you live in. The Moomins would like you just the way you are. Moomin Troll's relationship with Snork Maiden looks very different from the one with Snufkin, but it's no less devoted. With her, he's a fuzzy nuzzle machine, always holding paws and professing his love out loud. They dance and romance. They have an occasional spat, but always make up. They're sappy even by the standards of other Moomin Valley residents. With him, he tries to be as cool as a cucumber, and fails adorably, to match Snufkin's stoic demeanor. They share secrets and occasionally a bed. Jansen's map of the house lists this as Moomin Troll and Snufkin's room and the cartoon regularly puts them in bed together. Just like Moomin Troll and Snork Maiden, clearly Moomin Troll is getting different emotional needs met by both parties. And he's not cheating. This is all on the up and up. Snork Maiden is occasionally portrayed as annoyed by competing for Moomin Troll's time, but even in those cases, she doesn't hold it against Snufkin and eventually gets over her jealousy. Snufkin leaves each winter, and everybody respects his need to be alone. It's not a conventional love affair, but it is a happy and healthy one. Moomin Troll's parents are fully aware of his devotion to both creatures, and they actively support him, just as Jansen's own parents supported her being bisexual. They offer him advice on maintaining both relationships. They talk to him through his own feelings and try to help him understand those of his partners. They are a straight, monogamous couple as far as we ever see, but they totally embrace their son and his dueling, adorable relationships. This mindful and generous approach to relationships extends to how the Moomins relate to friends and family. When someone wants to move into Moomin House, talk turns to building of beds and the extending of the dinner table. The concept of family is flexible and inclusive. Friends, new and old, stop by and are treated like part of the family for however long they need. The Moomin Agenda. Moomin Troll has since become something of an icon not only to the LGBTQ community, but also to those struggling against authoritarian regimes. Jansen parodied fascists and rejected war as unjust in her political cartoons. Though Moomin Valley is intended for younger audiences, it still highlights the value of human life. Moomins have been used as symbols for various human rights movements, from Black Lives Matter and anti-fascism in the United States to women's rights in Poland. Rage Against the Machine's Tom Morello recently donned an Antifa Moomin shirt. 
The official Moomin blog openly embraces LGBTQIA plus rights, feminism, environmentalism, and freedom from religion. And the Moomin agenda is no fanon or retcon. It's part of both the original and ongoing Moomin canon. Looking at the Moomin fandom, one can't help but assume Jansen would be proud. Equality isn't a new idea. It's part of human nature. More broadly, Jansen drew Moomin for the International Red Cross and UNICEF. The humanitarian values continue today with the characters promoting Amnesty International. Jansen wrote that she dreamt of creating a happy society through her work. And as we look to the worldwide fandom devoted to these ideals, it's clear that, at least a little bit, she succeeded. No matter who you are or where you are, the warmth and affirmation of Moomin Valley is just a click away. Ultimately, the art we make makes up our world. Who wouldn't want to live in a world like Moomin Valley, free to love who and how they choose? And because of the efforts of Tove Jansen and countless other creators, that world and ours are getting a little closer every day. If you need more Moomin mozzarella on your personal pansexual pizza, here are some recommendations. The 1990s series is pure adorable fluff. The 2019 series aims for a bit older audiences, but is still very cute. The 2014 film Moomins on the Riviera aims older still, though in a charming way. The books range from melancholy to silly, while the comics are best described as wacky. Whatever Moomin media you're in the mood for, there's part of the franchise to suit you. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Culturally Eft. This episode was written by Tempo, our helpful husky novelist. I am your host, RK. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more thoughtful, furry content. And if you are itching to throw off your personal shackles of capitalism, feel free to throw some of that money our way on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash culturally eft, so that we can make even more of these videos. Funding for Culturally Eft is provided almost exclusively through Patreon, so your support matters and makes videos like this possible. Thank you to anyone who supported us on Patreon so far. We really could not be here without you. Hey guys, it's Dr. Rusty here with your test results back. Uh, uh, ooh. I'm sorry to say you have a very severe Culturally Eft deficiency. The only way to cure that is by subscribing and consuming Culturally Eft at least, at least once a week. If you want to inoculate yourself and make sure you don't get it again, you should try getting one of our t-shirts you can get at culturallyf.com. Sign up to our newsletter for more updates on that. Uh, you should also consider supporting us on Patreon. It's a great way not to get this thing happening again. I've been your host, Dr. Rusty. Definitely not a doctor. Get effed every night and call me in the morning.